There we saw two oh, beans! Two beans. We Fantastic! Made it. The circle is closed. We, made it. we made it in the anti-clockwise direction. Oh. All the way through from the last stretch from point one to point eight. They really deserve this applause. Today we are in the CCC, the CERN Control Center, where on September 10th, 2008, the LHC dream became a reality. After 20 years of planning, R&D, and construction of components all over the world in physics labs and industry. Never in the history of physics had a particle accelerator started up so quickly and so smoothly. The proton beam accomplished its first full circle in the clockwise direction in just one hour and the second in the opposite direction was successfully completed two hours later. This was an absolute record. It had taken LEP, the previous accelerator in 1989, 12 hours to accomplish what the LHC did in just 50 minutes with much more sophisticated components. Over the following days, the LHC team made spectacular progress and were able to keep a beam circulating for a considerable period of time. But after 10 days, while ramping up the current in the accelerator's magnets in preparation for 5 TEV running, an unexpected failure happened in one of the LHC's eight sectors. But what actually went wrong in sector 3-4 of the LHC tunnel on September 19th? Lucio Rossi, head of the LHC magnets group, gives us the details. It went wrong what we call the connection here to this superconducting cable. You see, this is the real cable actually carrying the real current that generates the magnetic field. This cable, superconducting cable, can carry up to 12,000 amps. You should imagine another magnet nearby here, just exactly with the same configuration, with its own cable coming on this side. The cable are connected are connected here with the splice, such a way that the current can flow from one magnet to the other. You have to imagine that the resistance of this uh, connection, of this splice, is very small. It's one billionth of a, of a ohm. Ohm is the measurement of a resistance, very small. Uh, here we have one billionth of a ohm of a resistance, um, when it is done correctly. Unfortunately, probably there is one where in the incident happened that uh, went wrong because the resistance was 200 times larger, so too large, and basically it melts out and completely uh, to the level that probably here the conductor and the copper, stabilizing copper, melt out and really the conductor broke and at a certain point an electric arc developed in such a way and when in electrical machine like the LAC with the energy that we have in the magnet, you develop an arc, we are done. We lost two magnets, the two magnets nearby, and because of the pressure wave of helium, this you have to imagine, this is closed and there is really superfluid helium inside. Because of the electric arc, this, this enclosure is perforated, is perforated and so helium can come in the vacuum chamber and at a certain point helium is very cold, gets immediately hot and immediately expand, generating a wave of pressure that really did a lot of damage to many magnets. So it was an electrical interconnection, exactly like this one, between two superconducting magnets that melted during electrical tests on September 19th. There's actually 20,000 such interconnection between superconductors, all of them with record-breaking performance requirements. This is what created the leak of superfluid helium, which damaged 53 dipoles, exactly like this one, 53 out of 1,232, that make up the 27 kilometers of the LHC machine. So how did CERN react to the damage and where are we now with the repairs? To know more about the LHC repair progress at CERN, follow our monthly updates on this space until beam time.